Manchester students mourn. Fears in Bahrain, armed forces descend upon protesters. Joy rides terror minutes from university. And sport finds out why Teddy's getting the teas at the Cane Rose. Good afternoon and welcome to Winchester News Online. I'm Charlotte Clark. Winchester students from Japan have reacted with disbelief and horror this week following events in their homeland. They've been doing everything they can to help. Shira Pinchuk reports. The effects of the recent earthquake that devastated Japan and shattered its citizens have been felt here in Winchester among the university community. It's quite tough to be far away from home and family in this situation. People in Japanese people in abroad can't see exactly what happened or can't see how their families thought it was horrible. A call room has been set up at San Sweeton Lodge to allow free calls to Japan and contact families and friends. A Pray for Japan was established in the university chapel. That's why we wanted to allow the space for them to do that and to let them know that there are people around that they can come and talk to. Students are finding their own ways to cope with the dire straits their country is facing. We are making paper cranes every day to pray for Japan. I ask people to write down some message to Japan and um, and take a picture like this. As for today, the situation in Japan is still evolving and the threat of a nuclear disaster is still very serious. I hope everything is going to be fine. Well, very troubling times there. Former Winchester student Kanai Sumi is on the scene near Tokyo. We spoke to her earlier today. When I was in the earthquake, I, I sort of like promised myself I would be with people I love as much as I can while I'm, I'm, I'm alive. We don't know what to trust really, whether we should trust the government, whether we should trust foreign media. I just hope Japanese government is saying the truth. Well, I don't really know whether things will get better, but I just have to think it will get better. Many in Bahrain are becoming increasingly concerned following armed Saudi Arabian intervention. We all had an exclusive interview this morning with Bahrainian citizen Ali Ashour. Uh, it's like uh, they are using uh, several armies on innocent people, on going from village to village, using tanks, Apache airplanes, all type of weapons. On innocent people, where is where is America? Where is the Europe? Where is the European Union? And can you imagine that 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 the national army is is getting assistance from other GCC armies to clamp down on on peaceful people? They cannot control their own people. Now in other news, joyriders terrorised local residents yesterday after they took a car and drove it at speed into a wall. Sam Homewood was on the scene. This is the scene at the end of Chill Bolton Avenue. Joyriders stole a Volkswagen Golf from nearby Full Flood and crashed it here, destroying a city wall and knocking down a lamppost. It appears the vehicle was being driven along Stockbridge Road when it careered into the wall. Three teenage boys have been arrested in connection with the crash. One of them from Winchester, the other two from Southampton. The blue Volkswagen had not been reported missing when police officers found it abandoned in the early hours of Tuesday morning. The car belonged to Jill Charles. She received a phone call from a police officer at around 3.30 a.m., informing her that her car had been involved in a crash. Well, I was quite fond of that car, so pretty upset but um, I mean I, the main thing I think well none of my family have been hurt you know nobody's hurt 
and um, a car's a car, but, you know, it was my favourite little car. Those arrested cannot be named for legal reasons. Jill Charles is left to reflect on the damage caused by her car. Sam Homewood, Winchester News Online. Staff at the university are due to strike next Thursday. Members of the university and college union have voted not to work on the 24th, staging a nationwide walkout after pension rows. Andrew Giddings investigates the crisis. The university and college union has announced the results of two ballots. Cast to decide whether or not to strike. The result? Overwhelmingly in favour. The UCU represents staff at further and higher education facilities, including some of the staff here at Winchester. But the Human Resources Department here told me they have no idea how many members of staff are actually represented by that union, and so they don't know how many people will be turning up for work here on Thursday next week. The president of Winchester Student Union is concerned about the impact a strike will have on students here. If it does come out that there will be a massive impact on students, then yes, we'll obviously be against it because that's our priority. And all this comes with the news reported by Winnell two weeks ago that staff here are considering industrial action over redundancies as well. Winchester's UCU representative, Dr Mick Jardine, has refused to comment. So on top of increasing fees and the possible damage to university services caused by redundancies, students here may soon find themselves paying the price for upcoming strikes as well. Andrew Giddings for Winchester News Online. A generation of young people could go without careers advice due to the possible suspension of the student service connections. Kieran Brannigan has more. Thousands of young people in the area could go without careers advice as connection services are closed across the country after the government claimed that the current system was not working. The connection service offers careers information and advice to young people aged 13 to 19. The system is funded by Hampshire County Council, who will ultimately decide if the centres close. The government plans to introduce a new universal careers guidance service from April 2012. But what does that mean for existing career services, like this one in Winchester City Centre? Where will young people go now for their careers guidance? Many will go to their school or college service, like here at Winchester University. But with cuts across the board, there are fears a generation could go without proper advice. There's a year gap where there is just really nothing in place and schools are scrambling around trying to fill that gap. So there's a real risk that there's a, a big cohort of students who are just not going to have access to good professional impartial careers advice. Hampshire County Council say that any decision has yet to be made on the connection service. For now, the future of career advice for young people across the county remains unclear. Kieran Brannigan, Winchester News Online. And now for your sport with Gareth Messenger. Gareth, what do you have for us? Well, Charlotte, with both teams sitting in the middle of the table, Basingstoke Dartford was likely to be an open encounter. I went down to see which team emerged victorious. It took Basingstoke just 56 seconds to get started against Dartford on Saturday. Sam York's through. Exactly the start Frank Gray would have wanted. Delano Sam York with his second goal in as many games. But Dartford hit back immediately with Ryan Hayes' cracking strike. The Dragons lead last in just three minutes, a classy finish by the Dartford winger. The Dragons' downfall this year has been their inconsistent defending and it again told during this scramble. Danny Harris poking home. But the goals didn't stop there. The home side broke the darts defence, Sam York's second of the game. Former England international Teddy Sheringham was at the cameras to see his son Charlie, but it was Sheringham Jr. who almost took the plaudits. Basingstoke themselves came close to finding a winner, but the points were shared. Gareth Messenger, Winchester News Online. In results from last night, playoff chasers easily failed to put pressure on teams above them as they drew a blank away to Dartford. In the Zamoretto League, AFC Totten took full advantage of a defeat for second place Sholin as they put three past Hungerford Town. Davies grabbing two for the high-flying Stags. And Winchester City reached their first final of the season after a penalty win against Hamble. They will face Bournemouth Poppies in the Wessex League Cup final. University men's football first need to win their penultimate game of the season to stand any chance of avoiding the drop. Exeter were the visitors on Monday night. Mikey Smith saw this vital game. Relegation threat and Winchester went into their game on Monday night knowing only a win will do to give them an outside chance of staying up this season. Opponents Exeter Thurs travelled to the parents on the back of a home draw against Winchester 
which had ended their title hopes. And it was the home side who took the early initiative, James Knight curling Winchester into lead after a neat exchange with Lewis Clarkson. Shortly after, Winchester doubled their lead. Josh Finch returning to the starting lineup after a back injury, heading home John Borgs in swinging corner. Winchester kept up the early pressure, and it wasn't long before James Knight grabbed his second. The little captain clearly relishing his new role as a centre forward. The goals here, his first two of the season. But there was more to come from the home side in the first half. A rather scrappy build up here, but Finch's powerful shot certainly wasn't. Finch clearly delighted with his second and couldn't resist sharing the moment with our camera. <laughs> And there was no let up for the lacklustre Exeter side in the second half. Anderson Bancoli neatly tucking away his first goal in Winchester colours as the Winchester dominance continued. And Bancoli appeared to have enjoyed the experience of scoring and added his second just minutes later after some excellent play by Finch. This completed the scoring with a 6 0 result, meaning Winchester still have a fighting chance of staying in the division going into the final game of the season. Mikey Smith for Winchester News Online. That's your sport. Back to you, Charlotte. Thanks, Gareth. And that's all for this week, but make sure you log on to www.winall.co.uk for more award-winning news and sport. And don't forget to click onto our weekly What's On feature with a rundown of Winchester's best events. From all of us here at Winnell, goodbye. <laughs>